On that side of the House. The member for Chifley. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Infrastructure and Transport, and it's what's been the impact of Qantas's decision to lock out its workforce and shut down the airline on the travelling public. What's been the public response to this decision? The Minister for Infrastructure and Transport. I thank uh, you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I certainly thank the member for Chifley for his question. As a result of the shutdown, at least 68,000 Qantas passengers were affected. 48,000 domestic passengers and 20,000 international passengers. As a result of that, people couldn't get to businesses, people couldn't get home to their families. We had people turning up at London Heathrow Airport, we had people turning up at airports not knowing how they could get home. Indeed, last night, I spoke to a gentleman who'd booked on Qantas, had flown from the United States, was stranded in a Sydney hotel with his 43-week pregnant wife. I intervened uh, because he was unable to get a seat on a plane. I intervened. Uh, my office rang uh, Qantas and they were able to get him and his wife on a seat to Cairns this morning. They're the sort of personal issues that were raised as a result of this issue. But that is why the government was so determined to get this airline up and running. Those opposite say, why didn't we do something? Why didn't we Member do something? Stirred. Well, the Leader of the Opposition was asked on ABC 24 on the 14th of October a very clear question. What would be your specific intervention? He was given the opportunity to call for government intervention and he did not do so. Did not do Member so. North Sydney. That's right. And what changed, what the changed North Sydney. between the 14th of October and Friday? What changed before Qantas made this decision? One thing changed, one thing changed, which is the that the for, unions, the, the licensed engineers... The Minister for Infrastructure and Transport will resume his seat. The member for Herbert, having been warned, has continued to interject. He was warned and he has continued to interject. The action I'm about to take will say will give a quarter on my right that say that I pay favourites more ammunition. I will not name the member. I will invite him to leave the chamber for one hour under 94A. But a warning is a precursor to a naming. The Minister for Infrastructure and Transport. Thanks, Mr Speaker. One thing changed in terms of the industrial action. As of Saturday, as of Saturday, the only industrial action that was taking place was pilots Member wearing red lines. ties. That was the only action that was taking place and making announcements to their members. And yet between the 14th of October, when the Leader of the Opposition made that statement, and Friday, the day before, the same day we had the front page Telegraph article, the same day that we had the letters from the, from the Premiers of Victoria and New South Wales, the Leader of the Opposition changed his position. And of course, we know that earlier on he could not answer the question when journalists asked him when was he told. Those opposite, those opposite speak about. The manager of opposition business has interjected about industrial terrorism. We heard questions yesterday speaking about extreme union action when it was a lockout by the employer. This side of the House makes no difference whether you have a suit on or a blue collar. Extreme warm. action, not in the national interest, will be condemned by this side of the House. Yeah. And indeed, indeed, I said, I said about. Mr Pavinas's comments, for example, in The Australian, I was very concerned. I joined criticism of the Secretary Steve Pavinas and I said this. His comments were extraordinary because you need a strong company in order to employ people, in order to have union members. I took action. I took action. I condemned the extraordinary action. Those on that side of the House don't do it. 
the shadow treasurer, to be fair, did call for intervention earlier. It'd be interesting to see what the shadow treasurer Order. knew and when and who he expired. was informed. Order. Order. The leader of the Nationals. And my question is also to the Minister for Transport. Order. Did, did the Minister at any time propose the use of Section 431 of the Fair Work Act to stop the industrial action at Qantas? The Minister. The record will show that I called the Minister and he made a response. The member for uh, Werra, 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 Werra. Reed. <laughs> the member for Greenway. <laughs> The member for Greenway has the call. Again, the member for Greenway. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My is to the Minister for Regional Australia, Regional Development and Local Government and the Arts, representing the Minister for Jobs and Workplace Relations. Will the Minister inform the House how the Fair Work Act and the Government's decisive actions under that Act have strengthened the rights of working people and protected the national interest? How were workers treated before the introduction of the Fair Work Act? The Minister for Regional Australia, Regional Development and Local Government and the Arts is the Minister representing the Minister for Jobs and Workplace Relations. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker, and I thank the uh, member for Greenway for her question and her commitment to ensuring that there is fairness in the workplace. I am asked by the member how Fair Work Australia has operated in the national interest. Well, it has done this by restoring Australian values into the industrial relations framework. Those values of fairness, of security, of good faith and getting the balance between work and family are Australian values and their Labor values. But they were not the values that were embodied in work choices. They are now embodied in Fair Work Australia. Because under work choices, there was no right to collective bargaining. There was no requirement for the employer to bargain in good faith, and nor was there an ability in circumstances in which the parties couldn't resolve their issues to have recourse to an independent umpire. For far as the opposition was concerned, they said no to collective bargaining, no to good faith bargaining and no to an industrial umpire. We said yes to all of those things because they are Australian values. And I'm asked the question about how this implementation into the Act has advantaged Australia. It's done it two ways, not just by restoring the values, but by ensuring that we got the planes flying again after that precipitous action taken by Qantas over the weekend. Now, I'm also asked in this question, Mr Speaker, how workers were treated before the implementation of uh, Fair Work Australia. Well, it is Melbourne Cup Day, and I always think it's a good thing on Melbourne Cup Day to have a look at the form, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> and there was the coalition form. We've talked about it before. The Peter Reith form, that's approach to industrial relations resolution was to bring in the Rottweilers, bring in the Black Hoods, sack a workforce, and replace it with scabs. But that was Peter Reith. Who became the Industrial Relations Minister after Peter Reith? The current Leader of the Opposition, Abbott out of Reith, because he continued the process going forward. Now we know, we know the Leader of the Opposition didn't back the former Minister for Industrial Relations, Peter Reith, in the presidential stakes, but he holds the same form as the minister for, for um, previous Minister for Industrial Relations. I'll give you some examples, because it also pays in this place to have a corporate memory about how some of these disputes were handled. The Morris McMahon dispute. Workers out on the grass for months because the employer was not required to bargain in good faith. Paid $11 an hour, and what was the Leader of the Opposition's admonition to them? Go back to work because you've got a Rolls-Royce deal. Then there were the circumstances when they were negotiating the auto industry package, and he required the industry to pay into a fund so that they could sue workers and sue unions. Then there was the TriStar dispute, 
where he wouldn't intervene, saying it wasn't the role of the government to get involved. And then there was the GK O'Connor dispute, the meatworks, where they were sacked and on the grass for nine months because they had had to put up with the 60 per cent wage cut. The Leader of the Opposition stayed out of that dispute, but more so he refused to disclose his dealings with the company. Now, doesn't that sound familiar in the context of this Qantas issue today? Here he is. We know that there was engagement with Qantas, but he refuses to disclose what he would have said to Order. Qantas had he Order. picked the up the phone. Has... He would have the said, continue the dispute. Expired. Order. The member for Goldstein. I said we should use section 431. Exactly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My, my question is to the Assistant Treasurer. Did the Minister at any time propose the use of section 431 of the Fair Work Act to stop industrial action at Qantas? The Assistant Treasurer. And the member for Higgins is now warned. No. The member, <laughs> the member for Hindmarsh. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Assistant Treasurer and Minister for Financial Services well, and Superannuation. Uh, will the Assistant Treasurer update the House on the position of travellers with travel insurance affected by Qantas's decision to, lo to lock out its staff and ground its fleet? and uh, what factors will impact on the ability of travellers to claim for losses incurred? Yeah. The Assistant Treasurer, the Minister for Financial Services and Superannuation. More detail this time. The Member for Fadden will remove himself from the Chamber for one hour under 94A, yeah, and there are plenty others that could be following him. <coughs> the Assistant Treasurer has the call. I'd like to thank the member for Hindmarsh for asking a question which is of interest to literally over 100,000 Australians and, and people from other countries who were travelling on Qantas, both in Australia and overseas, who were caught up in this issue. Of course, an issue which affected employees who've been trapped in hotels all over overseas, can't get back to their families because of this action. And an issue, of course, important to the insurance industry, which I'll return to in more detail in a moment. This issue of what rights travellers have in this, a, a, an issue conspicuously absent from the coalition's questions, it took a government mem member to ask this question. The rights of the uh, travellers, of course, are influenced heavily by the turn of events from uh, Saturday afternoon. The rights of travellers are influenced heavily by the disproportionate and precipitate action of Qantas. They are the people who grounded the who grounded the planes and now make it a live issue about the insurance rights of people. And why is it we never hear the opposition criticise Qantas? Why is it they only ever criticise one side of the debate? They have been deafeningly silent on what they think about Qantas. And as much as they may shout my answer down, we know that their industrial relations policy is dial a friend, ring up Qantas and find out what to do. Now, of course, the reason why travellers in this country need information about their insurance is because Qantas could not manage its employee relations and so in turn they chose to damage the economy because an otherwise smart company full of professionals can't do the day job for which they're paid to do, which is encourage their employees on a process of change. Because Qantas could not do its day job properly, travellers now need to find out what are their rights. And I've spoken with the Insurance Council of Australia. I've spoken to the Insurance Council the of Australia. Member, the Assistant Treasurer will resume his seat. It is very tempting, but it would be time consuming. I warned the member for Higgins. She will leave the chamber for one hour under 94A only because I just cannot wait around for a division. But when I warn people, I expect there to be a reaction. The Assistant Treasurer has the call. I've spoken with the Insurance Council of Australia. First of all, they say that uh, travellers inconvenient should check with Qantas first to see what Qantas will say to them. Now, normally they tell me, the insurance industry, that industrial action is a predictable event, so sometimes insurance companies will not pay uh, the cost of the uh, lost ticket. 
That is, but the emphasis there is normally a predictable event. Now, the insurance industry have said this shutdown was unpredictable. And because of that, insurers, I've been told, not universally, not universe. Well, if the opposition don't think it was unpredictable, they need to explain Order their actions. The Minister will now, the the, what the uh, Qantas, Order. what insurers have said. Order. What have the Minister will ignore interjections and the interjectors will cease interjecting. The Assistant Treasurer has the call. The insurers have said that whilst it can't be a blanket commitment, they will look sympathetically to claims. They do say that uh, they will assess whether or not uh, passengers were able to mitigate their loss, if they were able to get a flight quickly, what were the losses incurred. But they do believe that because this is an unpredictable element, they are going to uh, be more traditionally sympathetic to claims than perhaps has been the case on other occasions. But of course, this comes down to the question of unpredictability. This event was certainly unpredictable to the flying public. It was certainly unpredictable to the tourism industry. It was certainly unpredictable to the mining industry. It was certainly not notified to the government until Saturday afternoon. But of course, that does beg the question, who did know? I sat through the 12 hours of uh, hearings in, in the Commission uh, last Sunday and uh, Monday morning, didn't run into any Liberals in that in that uh, lift queue trying to sort the matter out. But what I do know is that Qantas said that from a, easily from the 20th of Member October this was on the cards. Of course, there's one other set of actors who can explain whether or not it was unpredictable. And we all know where I'm going here, don't we? What did the opposition know? Did you know, Order. were you informed at any Order. stage, staff transactions to your Order. people? Did some of your former staff the members tell you what was going on? Shame. Expired. The minister's time has expired.